Okay, this podcast will go over uh, configuring VLANs on a switch, configuring VLAN trunking between switches, and finally configuring a Layer 3 switch or a switch to operate at Layer 3, which means it's going to provide routing services. So uh, I've already set up my PCs to have IP addresses. This one's 192.168.2.2. It's just 3.2, 2.3, I think. Let me check that. Oh. Yeah, I set it to the wrong thing. I set it to the same thing the other one had. I'm using a simulator that you can uh, maybe find. Uh, technically speaking, you're supposed to be a part of the Cisco Network Academy to get it, which I am through some volunteer work I do. But uh, but you can't really uh, just find it for free if you're not. So yeah, so now I have 2.3 and 3.3. So the first step of the lab is we're going to put some switch ports uh, in some particular VLANs. So in this case, I'm going to get in the switch config, type the right command, and then to configure the VLAN, we need to go into the interface. I'm going to use ports 2 and 3. I'm going to put ports 2 and 3 in VLAN 2. Um, this is the command to put it in VLAN 2. It says, simply says, access VLAN does not exist, creating VLAN 2. If I would have wanted to create VLAN 2 first, I could have done that. But since the VLAN didn't exist, it created it for me. All right. That wasn't right. I wanted that to be VLAN 2. Support so 2 and 3 or VLAN 2. And then I want to go to port 3 and 4 and make those VLAN 4. Not VLAN 4, VLAN 3. Sorry, 2 and 3 in VLAN 2, 4 and 5 in VLAN 3. So now um, I can run the command show VLAN brief, and that will show me my VLAN. So this shows me that port 2 and 3 are in VLAN 2, port 4 and 5 are in VLAN 3, and that's the state we want it to be in right now. So we're going to do that on both switches. Each student is going to do that on their own switch. Uh, and then we're going to verify it using all the PCs. So first we're going to do just one switch, and then we'll do the other switch. So we're going to connect the switches, the PCs to the switch. I'll put this one in VLAN 2. Put this one in VLAN 3. I'll put this one in VLAN 2. And I'll put this one in VLAN 3. All right, so I've got them all plugged in uh, now in the proper VLAN. So I should be able to ping from the VLAN 2 PC to the other VLAN 2 PC. I'm waiting for the lights to turn green. I'll talk about that again in a minute. But you should notice that it took about 45 seconds for the lights to turn green. And uh, we'll go over that in a moment. So there, my VLAN 2 PC is green. So now I can ping from this VLAN 2 PC to the other VLAN 2 PC. And that worked. But I cannot ping from a VLAN 2 PC to a VLAN 3 PC. Why is that? Because I don't have a gateway yet. I do not have a device that is routing. I have a Layer 2 switch. So my, layer two, my devices in the same VLAN can talk to each other. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Go ahead and ping my other VLAN 3 PC. There you go. So VLAN 2 works on VLAN 2. VLAN uh, 3 works on VLAN 3. VLAN 2 cannot talk to VLAN 3. So that's great. But what if we have more devices that will fit on one switch and we want that VLAN to span across the other switch? Well, uh, for that we'll need trunking. But before we can figure trunking, we need to configure this switch to uh, be in the proper VLANs. Uh, a, another thing you can do you may not be f familiar with is you can enter a ra interface range and you can figure, configure more than one point at, port at a time. So in this case, I'm going to say I want to configure ports 2 and 3. I want to put both of those ports in VLAN 2. And I want to do 4 and 5. And I'll put them in VLAN 3. So that'd save myself a little time. Another thing we're going to do 
is we're gonna go range two to five. Remember earlier when we plugged our ports in, they went orange before they turned green? That's a side effect of the spanning tree protocol. We're not really gonna go over that much, but the short version is spanning tree makes sure there's only one path through a layer two network. So if we had a, multi a redundant path, like a big circle here, uh, that could cause problems if all, all of those links were, were active because uh, broadcast frames would circle the, the LAN forever and never die and would kill performance. So spanning tree blocks on one of those links. So we're gonna do a thing, uh, make a configuration change so that the end user ports go active as soon as they're plugged in. So we're gonna do spanning tree port fast and this is gonna save us the effort of having to wait 45 seconds for those configuration change, for those interfaces to become green again. So I'm gonna go delete these links. And I'm gonna reconnect them to the other switch. We'll be doing this in the lab with the real equipment so you don't have to worry about how the, the uh, simulator is working. You just need to worry about the commands and whatnot. Do you see how they're green already? Uh, port fast is pretty cool. Uh, so, you know, you might want to consider including that in your standard config every week when you're configuring switch ports if it is uh, the appropriate thing to do. I'm probably not going to tell you to do that, but if you uh, are smart and don't want to wait forever for your switches to become, your switch ports to become active, that would be a, uh, a good uh, benefit. So I just ping VLAN 2, and now I'm going to ping VLAN 3. So now my, my two switches have been verified. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move two of these two of these v, two of these PCs back to the other switch. I'm going to put the VLAN 2 PC in a VLAN 2 port and a VLAN 3 PC in a VLAN 3 port, right? And now I need to connect the switches together. Switches are like type devices, so you need to connect them with a crossover. I generally like to connect them with a high number of ports. It doesn't really matter what port you use, but I'm going to connect 24 to 24. And now you see those are orange. Those are that's a spanning tree doing its work. We're not going to uh, worry about that right now. So I have VLAN 2, I have VLAN 3. Can I ping between as soon as this link is up? If I ping, not ping between VLAN 2 and VLAN 3, ping from VLAN 2 PC to another VLAN 2 PC. Let's wait for this link to come up. Forty-five seconds is what it should take. Here, there we go. Links up. So I'm going to try to ping between VLAN two and VLAN two. So right now my pings are not working, but the switches are connected, so that should be working, right? Well, no. If we look at the switch config, port 24 is in VLAN 1. So if I had VLAN 1 PCs on either of those switches, that would be able to work. But what we need to get VLANs to pass between two switches is we need to configure that switch port to be a trunk. So we're going to go configure 24 as a trunk. And the com command for that, switch port mode trunk. All right. And once you configure a trunk, there's, there's a couple different ways you can verify it. Uh, one way is if you do show VLAN brief, 24 doesn't show up anymore. So if your stuff's not working and 24 is still there, that's probably uh, because it's not configured as a trunk. And then we can also do show int trunk. I'm abbreviating these commands. So this is port 24 is a trunk and it's forwarding everything. So now, now I'm gonna ping and it should work. There we go. So now my uh, traffic between the two switches is working because I have trunking. So let's think about trunking for a minute. Now that I have trunking, can I ping from a VLAN 2 PC to a VLAN 3 PC? Can I? No, I still cannot ping a layer a VLAN 3 PC because trunking is not routing. Trunking allows a VLAN traffic from multiple VLANs to cross a single link. It gets tagged, the tag gets looked at on both sides, and then um, the the uh, tag gets looked at and put back in the proper VLAN. So now I have um, trunking, but now I want to be able to con connect. Well, first off, 
you might be thinking, hey Rich, you didn't configure the other switch, what's up with that? Well, the default state for a switch port on a uh, Cisco switch for trunking is dynamic auto. So what that means is, dynamic auto, is that right? I'm not sure, I can't remember if that's right, hold on, we can look. Show int FA0 slash 24 switch port. So the, yeah, I was right, the administrative mode is dynamic auto. What that means is that if it receives a packet from another switch that says, hey, I want to trunk with you, it will agree to trunk. So we see the operational mode is trunk. If both of them are in dynamic auto, neither one of them are trying to communicate out with the other switch to form a trunk. But as soon as I configure the other switch to be a trunk, it sent out that negotiation packet and said, hey, I want to be a trunk. Uh, and this side was set for dynamic auto. So then it said, okay, let's trunk. That'd be cool. So that's why this, inner, this switch is already um, a trunk. So that's a uh, you know, interesting little tidbit. You, you could certainly go ahead and hard code this as a trunk. You could certainly go ahead and do that. And now if we look at the, we look at that, it says it's configured as a trunk. So you can certainly do that, uh, but it's not necessarily required as long as the other side is configured for trunking. So now we want to be able to route between VLANs. So there's a couple things we need to do. One, we need to get this layer three switch connected to our LAN in some way. And we're going to do that with a crossover again. All right? We need to configure one of these two ports for trunking so that it becomes a trunk. Because if we do show int FA0 slash 24 switch port, it's configured for dynamic auto and it is a static access port. So we want to configure it for trunk. Switch port mode, trunk. Oh, and here we get the uh, famous command rejected interface to trunk encapsulation is auto, cannot be configured to trunk mode. So this particular switch, if we look up, up here, well, I don't see where it shows. That's weird, it says the uh, trunk encapsulation is dot one q We need to set specifically what the encapsulation type is to match the other switch. And what do I mean by encapsulation? You might remember from the uh, other podcast, I might have mentioned uh, ISIL or dot one q encapsulation. Uh, dot one q inserts the tag ISIL inner switch link uh, wraps the whole um, frame inside a new header and trailer. So we're going to need to set this to dot one q uh, encapsulation. So the command for that switch port switch port truck encapsulation dot one q. And now we should be able to make it a trunk. So now we were able to make it a trunk. So if we go show int trunk, we're good. We're a trunk. So now. We should be able to ping a VLAN, oh, it's not orange yet. I mean, it's not green yet. We should be able to ping a VLAN 3 PC, right? We've connected a layer 3 switch into the into the uh, network. Things should be golden. Well, we'll find out once this turns green. All right, it's green now. So we got a layer 3 switch in the network. We'll definitely be able to ping a layer 3 PC, a, a VLAN 3 PC, right? Wrong. We haven't configured our layer three switch for routing yet. So a couple things you have to do to make this switch work as a router. One, you want to tell it it's a router by putting the IP routing command in. Some uh, Cisco switches support it, some don't. It all depends on the version and the version of code you have. So once you enable IP routing, uh, now you can make it a, a router essentially. In order to do that, we need to create VLAN interfaces. So I type int VLAN2, I need to give it an IP address. I'm going to make it 2.1, 2 
same net mask as my other interface. Now we need to do VLAN 3, give it an IP address, and uh, that's not what I wanted. I'm going to look at my interfaces to see if I need to do a shut no shutdown or not. I don't remember. Yeah, it shows. Wait, nope, those are the physical. Here we go. Uh, all right, I, uh, I don't have... I, I created the interfaces, and I have the IP addresses set up, but it shows they're down. And the reason for that... Do you show VLAN brief? I don't have VLAN 2 or 3 on this switch. So you remember before on the other switches, I uh, put these switch ports in the VLANs and that automatically created uh, the VLANs. In this case, I don't necessarily need to put the switch, any switch ports in the VLANs. So I'm just going to create VLAN 2 and I'm going to create VLAN 3. And now if I do show VLAN brief, I have a VLAN 2 and I have a VLAN 3. And if I do show IP in brief, hopefully my interfaces are up now. So now my interfaces are up. So now I have a layer three switch configured for routing with interfaces in VLAN two and VLAN three that are up. If I do show IP route, I should have a routing table. I have two, uh, two entries in my routing table directly connected. So now I'll definitely be able to ping between VLAN two and VLAN three, right? Make sure I got green, yeah, I got green. And now I'm pinging and I still can't ping. So this is very frustrating. Oh wait, I didn't configure default gateways. This is one of my big pet peeves uh, in class uh, when people don't have gateways configured. In fact, on the midterm exam, if you do not configure a gateway and you call me over and say, I can't get it to work, can you help me? If you don't have the gateway configured or you have it incorrectly configured, that's what I like to call an automatic zero. I do have like three criteria on the midterm exam lab portion that will give you an automatic zero. I can't remember the other two right now, but uh, not having a default gateway on your PC or having an incorrect default gateway is uh, one of them. So now my PCs all have um, connections, all have uh, IPs and gateways. Uh, we have a layer 3 switch that's properly configured, has interfaces in the up status in each VLAN, and we're connected. You might be thinking, hey Rich, don't you need to connect the other switch to the uh, layer 3 switch? And the answer to that is no. Uh, we just need one path through the network. Remember my little talk about spanning tree earlier, how it's going to block one of those interfaces anyway. Uh, so no, we don't need it. It wouldn't even use it. So now, we're going to try to ping a VLAN 3 PC. And look at that, we're pinging across VLANs now. So I pinged from VLAN 2 to VLAN 3. The packet was put sent into this switch. It was sent across this trunk link with a VLAN 2 tag. It got to this layer 3 switch. The layer 3 switch was like, oh hey, that needs to go to layer 3. Let me uh, check out my routing table. And then it says, oh hey, I need to send that in VLAN 3. So it puts a VLAN 3 tag on it, sends it to this switch. This switch checks this MAC address table. It says, oh, VLAN 3, that PC, it needs to go to that switch. It gets to the switch and gets delivered to the VLAN 3 PC. And that is pretty much what we are going to be doing uh, this week for the lab activity. So hopefully you have commands and all that. I made just about every mistake you're going to make in the lab while I was going through this. So hopefully you have errors about the mistakes I made and what it looked like so that when you have those similar errors, uh, you have the ability to fix it for yourself. And uh, that's really it.